I am back for part two of the video that I was making earlier today that's for people that are struggling with being people pleasers and compulsive do-gooders. If you don't know a lot about what that means, the prior video, I talk a lot about that as well as where these patterns come from in terms of our experiences in life that may cause us to become more people pleasing or compulsively do good all the time. But in this video, I want to talk about how do we actually rewire these patterns in the brain so they stop playing out inside of us, right? Many people have tried to white knuckle it, so to speak, or just willpower their way out of these patterns only to find that they're acting them out again and again and again, and they just can't seem to interrupt the pattern. So this is going to teach you how that actually works and how you can do it successfully. At Wired for Wellness, we are aware of all the coping strategies out there for helping people to get out of these types of habits, and we think they're worth doing. That being said, we also think it's more effective to rewire the subconscious programming that causes the urge to please other people compulsively above yourself. So the way that I like to rewire anything in myself or for somebody else is to start by collecting information. Make a mental note of which people pleasing or goodest tendencies you have that play out regularly, right? Um, do you find yourself primarily doing this in romantic relationships? Do you find yourself mostly overdoing it with your children? Do you find yourself wanting to do this mostly in a work world because you feel insecure in that world? You know, everybody's patterning is going to play out a little bit differently and sometimes in certain contexts more than others. So look into that in yourself, do a little journaling and try to make a mental note of all those ways it plays out for you. Some other examples of that might be like some people, because they are so conflict averse, will tend to please others the most when someone is upset with them. Otherwise, in life, maybe they're not doing a lot of that. But when somebody gets mad at them, then those tendencies or behaviors come out. Or is your issue more about saying no when somebody wants something of you, right? If somebody's like, oh, could you please help me move from my apartment to another apartment on Saturday? I don't have movers, blah, 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 blah. Is that your situation in which this would come out the most? Or is your biggest hang up the struggle to express your own emotions? For some people, that feels very unsafe, particularly when somebody else has a different opinion or a different type of emotional reaction to whatever is going on. And so they, they then hide how they feel. Or is there a certain person or a few people that really bring out this, this pattern in you? And why do you think that is? Those are good questions to answer for yourself. Do you tend to overgive or please when you feel bad about yourself and you need some praise as a pick me up? That's a really, really common situation in which this tends to occur is many people with these patterns, the worse they feel about themselves in the moment, the more likely they are to do whatever somebody else wants, even if it doesn't actually feel good to them to do that. They are seeking the praise and that is worth it to them. So then ask yourself, what kind of beliefs underlie this behavior of people pleasing for you? These beliefs you can then bring to brain training processes and rewire them so that they stop ruling your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So some examples of beliefs that may go along with or underlie people-pleasing or compulsive do-gooding tendencies are, you know, other people won't like me if I don't always do what they want, and that will lead me to be alone. For some people, being alone is so terrifying and not being liked is so terrifying that it will cause them to do almost anything to make people like them. And that's probably not the healthiest situation. Another belief that might come up is something like, I cannot feel good about myself unless others are happy with me or think that I'm a good person. Another one might be, it's selfish to think of myself first or equally to others. And that's a really good one to challenge because, of course, if you consider yourself selfish for thinking of yourself at all, then that's never going to happen, right? Because for most of us, it's painful to think of ourselves as being selfish. So things along those lines, things that would 
fuel you to continuously people please or do good as much as you can. So then you may want to ask yourself, what experiences have instigated this for you or fed this pattern within you? That may be experiences from childhood, you know, watching your parents interact with other people or what they taught you directly about interacting with other people and prioritizing other people's needs versus your own. And it may have been reinforced in situations later in life as so look for those too. Finally, what emotions and sensations come up for you when you think about doing some of these things that sort of go against the people pleaser pattern? Number one, saying no. What happens inside you in terms of your emotions and your body sensations when you think about saying no in a situation where you would not normally say no or where you would have a hard time saying no? Those are the situations in particular where you want to check that. Number two, what happens for you when you are trying to set boundaries. And you particularly wanna check that too in the situations where it's hardest for you to set boundaries and then see what happens inside you. Number three, expressing your true opinions or feelings with someone who does not share them. Check and see what comes up inside you when you imagine doing that. Another one might be someone's getting upset with you when you didn't do anything wrong. What happens in That's a good thing to look at. Number five, feeling good about yourself aside from what you do for others, right? Can you imagine a situation in which you could feel good about yourself aside from all the things you do and you give to others? And I'm not saying it's a bad thing to feel good about yourself for giving to others. It's not. But the problem usually comes when that is the only reason you feel good about yourself, right? Um, because there do often come times in life when we can't give so much to others. We don't have as much to give, you know? Um, good example might be you're a new mom and you are just barely getting by, sleeping like three hours max a night and barely functioning during the day, right? That would be a situation in which you're giving a lot to that baby but that means you don't have a lot to give to others, right? Can you feel good about yourself in a situation like that? Or let's say you're sick, right? You are chronically ill and you are barely functioning, right? In that situation, you may not be able to give much to anyone. And is that okay? Is it okay to feel good about yourself even in those times in life? So think about or imagine that scenario and see if you could feel good about that or see if you have some really uncomfortable sensations or emotions come up when you imagine that. So those are the kinds of prep work I would do. But, but let's address now what is the actual goal of working on these patterns of people pleasing or compulsively doing good all the time at your own expense. Obviously, it's not to become totally self-centered, somebody that never thinks about others and never tries to do good things in the world. Of course, it's not that. We're going for a healthy balance here, like everything in life. We need to be able to say no easily when we don't want to do something and there's no need for us to do it. What if we actually helped when we wanted to help? And I would argue that this will come naturally with people and causes that we really care about, right? As an example, let's say your sister wants you to watch her kids for three days so she can take a vacation, but you're exhausted from work and watching three kids would totally tank your health. Plus, she actually does have the money for a nanny or a babysitter. That might be a good time to say no, right? But if somebody's having an emergency, is in the hospital, has nowhere else to turn, and it's a very meaningful relationship to you, this would be a great time to say yes. And you're likely to want to if you truly care about this person. And as long as they're not in a crisis all the time and only ever lean on you for help, then I still think this would be a good time to say yes. As an example, you know, I had a friend who was pregnant and was interested in me being at her birth. And I knew, you know, first time mom, the baby's probably going to come in the middle of the night, as they tend to do. 
and the labor is probably going to be long, right? Um, could be more than a day, you know? And so I typically do not sacrifice my sleep for anything because I have learned the hard way how important sleep is. And, but even so, this person was so important to me that I was like, oh yeah, hundred percent. If you want me there, I will be there. I'll be there for 36 hours if I need to be, you know, I'll nap on the couch if possible, you know, cause it was just very meaningful to me to be a support for this person. So I imagine that there are a lot of things like that for you in life where it would be an easy yes. What if those are the kinds of things you said yes to and you actually said no when it just wasn't a fit, when it just wasn't right for you. Number two, we need to be able to express how we feel when it's important, even if the other person is not gonna love it, right? As an example, if something your partner does on a regular basis hurts you, it, it's important to feel that you're able to express that and work towards a resolution together. If you don't like your partner's taste in clothing, eh, is that really that important to express? Is it worth hurting them over that something that trivial? Yeah, you'll probably survive keeping that to yourself, right? So here's this balancing act again that is so important. Number three, we need to be able to set boundaries around how much time and energy and resources we can give while maintaining our own health and stability, right? My whole background is in health. I'm all about health. So you know, all these things that I talk about, they do relate to your health. And this pattern is absolutely no different. So we need to strike that balancing act so that our health doesn't decline as a result of how much we're doing. And if we didn't do anything obviously hurtful, we shouldn't be overly apologetic or take all the responsibility for other people's feelings. Many human beings' emotional reactions to things actually are coming from their past, their past experiences and their perception of reality. And that doesn't mean don't take accountability for anything. No, absolutely not. If you're a jerk or you do something that's not nice, take responsibility, right? And absolutely, this is not a free pass to not listen or care about other people's feelings. It's just saying that for those of you out there who tend to try to take responsibility for everything in order to keep the other person happy, that is a detriment to you. And I think there is a balancing point for that too. And number five, we should be able to get to the point with rewiring the brain where we feel worthy of love and appreciation with a balanced approach to taking care of ourselves and being helpful to others. I do not think your sense of self-worth should be entirely based on how much you are helping people right now. Although I do also love helping people, I have at times in my life done it to the detriment of myself. And so I had to learn this lesson the hard way. And I had to find lots of reasons to love myself and appreciate myself outside of that during times when that really wasn't feasible. So there are some ways to start confronting these habits while you work on rewiring their neurological roots, because that's what they are. They are habits. They are something your brain has practiced so much that it's become like an automatic default response to please the other person or to do the right thing, whatever the right thing is in that situation. So here are some ways that you could start confronting these habits in your day-to-day -day life while you are rewiring the neurological uh, basis for them. Number one, when somebody asks you to do something, tell them you need to think about it and give yourself time to really get in touch with what you want. Many people just go with what first comes into their head or it's not even a thought. They react, they just say yes before they have even actually considered it. This is a very common thing that people pleasers do. And so the biggest way to help your brain learn that there is another option is to actually give yourself time to consider the other options, right? So pausing, as they teach in um, a lot of uh, the meditation background, is actually really, really helpful for changing neurological habits. It's not the only thing you're going to need to do to change that habit. That's definitely not going to be enough. 
But during that time that you pause to actually consider it, that is actually a moment where you could help your brain feel safe with whichever choice you make, whether it is doing what that person wants of you or not. If you're able to do that, and we give you a lot of neural retraining tools in the Wired for Wellness program to help you do that, if you're able to get yourself to a place of feeling really calm and really at peace with whichever decision you want to make, then you will actually be able to make a clear decision for yourself based on your own real desires, not just based on your patterning. The second thing that you can do is, you know, when you're getting angry and resentful or you are feeling taken for granted, pause and ask yourself if you've been giving more than you wanted to. Oftentimes when we feel taken advantage of or we feel angry and resentful about how much we've done for something and for someone else and how little they may have reciprocated by comparison, Actually, what we're mad about is how much we have given and how depleted we feel from it when we didn't really want to be doing it. Taking that pause will actually give and asking yourself that question will actually give you some time to find out for yourself what the real issue is. And if this is actually a situation in which you just need to dial it back, give less and say no more. And that that pause moment is also a moment when you can actually help yourself using neural retraining tools to release all the anger and resentment because ultimately if you keep saying yes regardless of what the other person is asking for if you keep saying yes you're depleting yourself you're really angry and resentful at yourself right so that's not an emotion that's helpful for you to carry around so let's let it go and these tools that we offer help you to successfully do that. Number three, start setting clear boundaries for yourself. Like one of the things that I did with my work where it was my biggest issue with overgiving is, you know, when I first started my career, I would be like answering emails at nine o'clock at night and the same on the weekend. And I would be taking too many appointments in a day more than I could really handle and things like that. So I had to start setting clear boundaries. So I asked myself, what would feel good to me in terms of my work life? And you can ask yourself this in terms of whatever you are overgiving to, right? What would feel good to me in terms of how much I am giving and how much I am mm, saving for myself in my relationship with my children? or in my relationship with my parents, or whatever it is where you are overgiving, right? And starting from that point of the ideal, it actually becomes much, much easier to determine what your boundaries should be. Starting from the place of where you are, which is pure chaos and pure overwhelm, you might actually be tempted to just say, I don't want to do any of it. <laughs> <laughs> right? But that may not actually be your truth. You may actually be wanting to do some of it, but you're just doing too much. So ask yourself, what would feel like the ideal? What would feel best? And then work backwards from there, right? So I knew for me that it was going to be very important for me to not work before a certain time every day or after a certain time every day. It was very important for me to not work on the weekends. And it was very important for me to not ever put aside my self-care unless it's an emergency. And so I set very clear boundaries. I was like, okay, I don't work after 8 p.m. or before 9 a.m. I don't work on the weekends. And I set specific times for my self-care. So those are the kinds of boundaries that I set. But you'll just have to figure out what it is for you in the situations that you're in. And then if you don't stick to those boundaries, let's say you set them, but then you kind of regress into people pleasing and you walk all over your own boundaries, have compassion for yourself, right? Changing these patterns is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. It can happen quite quickly with neural retraining with the tools that we use. However, it still takes some time. It still takes some practice, some repetition for your brain to go, oh, okay, there is a different way. I get it now and to start doing that for you, right? So don't be punitive with yourself as you are making these changes. That doesn't help anything. Then another one, find things to love about yourself aside from what you do for others. Maybe take some time to journal and really reflect on 
what else you love about yourself and what else others love about you and, and, and so many things, right? I don't, it doesn't really matter to me where you find that sense of self-worth, but that sense of self-worth should be so big and so broad and encompass so many different parts of who you are that no one thing could ever topple your sense of self-worth, right? The belief system that I think is most helpful for people that struggle with self-worth is really the belief that your self-worth is inherent. Just, just your existence is enough. And that is your most foolproof type of belief system for feeling good about yourself. So I'm a big fan of that one, actually. Obviously, that sort of belief system can be troublesome when you have people like with narcissistic personality disorder or something like that. But for the average person, that's a really helpful belief system because most people are struggling with a ton of insecurities. Then finally, you know, practice getting in touch with your true feelings and emotions when you are by yourself. And then actually imagine expressing them to other people and having it go really well. Oftentimes, over the course of time, through bad experiences we've had with expressing ourselves, whether with our parents or later in life, we've all had some bad experiences with that, where somebody jumped down our throat or made us feel silly or dumb for whatever we thought or felt, or what have you. But that doesn't mean that all interactions are like that. And I don't think that we should let that shut down our expression of our true you know, opinions and feelings. And so when you actually practice getting to know what your feelings are, obviously they become easier to express, but also when you actually envision expressing them to somebody and having them be really well received, you're actually teaching your subconscious that it's safe to express yourself. You know, that can help sort of prime the pump for you to get better and better at that as you practice in your day-to-day -day life and as you rewire these patterns. All right, cool. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like it, please comment and consider subscribing so that other people can find this information too. And if you want to rewire your own people-pleasing or do-gooder patterns, use the links around this video to get started doing that today. All right. Thanks for listening and I will see you in the next video.